Welcome back to the channel. As you guys can see, the Corvette is still on the lift. And yes, it'll still be on the lift for the next couple of weeks. But we got a couple more projects. Then we should be wrapping this thing up and getting this car back on the road. Well, today's project is all about crankcase ventilation. You guys know that we blew out the rear main seal um, not that long ago. We were putting a new clutch in the car, went for a test drive, and I pushed out the rear main seal. So, I'll have a link to that video up above. And ever since then, I have been concerned about the crankcase ventilation system on this car, or the PCV, positive crankcase ventilation system. So we've modified this car in two ways in the past. We had one was the Elite Engineering Catch Can, the E2 Catch Can, and we also had their Elite Engineering, like, clean side catch can. Basically, this goes from here to the air filter, the intake, and catches any oil vapors inside there. I think through the fact that we're pushing like 11 or 12 PSI now, I actually don't know the final, you know, I won't know the final measurement until we get the throttle body and cell and all that stuff wrapped up. But I think that we're simply overpowering the factory PCV system. And I've been reading up and the ZR1 guys have the same issue above a certain PSI. I think simply above 10 PSI, the stock ventilation system doesn't work anymore. So we are going to be actually getting rid of the air intake side. So this lead engineering catch can, the, uh, you know, the clean side, we'll be completely eliminating that. And we're going to be going to a new catch can system. And now I may keep the E2 catch can. I don't know just yet, but as of right now, I may keep it or may not keep it. I'll show you how. So what we have down here at my feet is the Pro Speed Engineering. It used to be called D3 Performance or it's Pro Speed Performance. One of those two. It's the same guys that made the fan shroud setup and electric fans on the Corvette. Well, I picked up their catch can. And as you guys can see, this is a seriously beefy unit. So what we have here is a catch can that will connect to both valve covers. So you've got your dash 10 or dash 12 hose. I'm not really sure. These will connect to this catch can. And then this is a open air ventilated catch can setup. And this will hopefully resolve all of our ventilation issues. And then also you guys will see there's a third hose here and this connects to the valley cover. And as you guys know that with the Edelbrock E4 setup on the white sump cars, they do not have a valley cover. And as you guys have seen in the previous video, we've already swapped, we've removed the blower and swapped to that vented valley cover off an LS7 or LS3 dry sump Corvette. So this third hose will connect here on the side of the tank and this will go to the vent port on the valley cover. So by adding the vented valley cover, we actually have options now. We could go with the original Pro Speed setup and just run that vented valley cover right to that hose or we can actually retain one of the pieces that we already have, and that is the E2 catch can. One of my friends has a ZR1. He runs ethanol E85, and he is a road course guy. And the way he ran his setup was he actually added the E2 catch can in line. So what he did was he plugged the port on the supercharger. He ran the port coming out of the valley cover into the in, in line, the inlet hose of the catch can. Then the outline hose, he had that running back then he ran it to this hose and he ran that hose into the Pro Speed catch can. So on the valley cover setup, we would essentially have two catch cans. Now, I don't know if I'm going to retain mine like that. We'll just make a decision. I could try to sell it. I already have an E2 catch can on the SS. We may put the clean side catch can over on the SS. I don't know. I may sell those. I mean, the, the parts are worth the money, but it may just be worthwhile just to keep my setup and plumb that into the ZL1 lines that we have over on the SS. I'm just not sure at this point. So that's another option. All right, guys, we're back out in the shop here. As you guys can see, the Corvette is on a lift and we've gotten a bit of work done. Now we already showed you the catch can that we're gonna be mounting, but I have a little bit of a surprise for you. You may be wondering, well, why is the fender on the ground? Well, that catch can that we showed you guys will actually be going underneath the fender. And the reason for that is when you're trying to stick 10 pounds of stuff in a five pound bag, there's simply no room for that catch can. If we had a more stock setup and we didn't have the coolant tank over there, a lot of guys put their catch cans over back in that corner. 
but you know we've got that coolant tank and that is basically our ice chest for the supercharger so we simply don't have the room to mount that catch can so as you guys can see over here the driver's side fender is off of the car now i could have gone through the steps through that but really there's only two things you really need to worry about one there is a hidden screw back here on the back of the fender, you know, underneath this trim, because this trim goes like that. There's a hidden screw there, it's a Torx T15. And then up here, hidden underneath the front bumper bracket, there's another screw that's right there, and that's just your standard seven mil. So those two screws are hidden, and then there's a third screw you guys really need to worry about, and that's this one that's you can get through once you pull the fender liner out. Pull that one out, and that's really about it. Now I did take out one of the side skirt screws just because the side skirt was being held really tight against the frame and the body. And with that side skirt being real tight, I could not get the fender out of the way. So that's kind of where we're at. We got the fender off and uh, we can go ahead and get this thing mounted. And basically what we're gonna be doing is mounting the catch can that you guys have seen basically right here. The left tab will be on this raised part and the right tab will be over here, and we're roughly gonna put it the top of the air filters, if that's what you wanna call it, the breathers, will be right about an inch from the top of this uh, fender mount. That way, because the, the fender curves down, and this way, when we mount it, we're not gonna have any issues with the air breathers hitting the you know inside of the fender. All right, guys, we're standing over the mess of the Corvette we have made. Quite a mess. Well, let's show you what we've done so far. As you guys will see, we actually have the catch can fully mounted onto the fender, like we were saying. So this catch can has a and breather fitting going and hose going to each valve cover. So I actually have the driver's side valve cover. The you can't see it, but the fitting's right back there. That sneaks through the body, through the cavity, and then up to right here in the back and then the passenger side is actually the front one because that one needs the longest amount of hose and we have that one going through here sneaking through the body up and eventually it'll be over to the passenger side valve cover now i know i haven't shown much of the mounting process for the pro speed catch can but honestly guys it's pretty simple drill your four holes put your nuts and bolts in there and the locking washers or whatnot, put all that in there, put your fittings on, run it through the body, you know, up and under, up and under. Oh, and then you've got the valley cover. I forgot about that. That is gonna be this hose. So there's actually three ports for that. You know, your valley cover down there. And that's pretty much it. You know, there's not much really to show except for the fact that I've been out here for a number of hours. Took like, I don't know, 45 minutes to get the fender off because I marked everything. Then it's taken a lot longer to put this in, run the lines, get everything figured out. I also had to figure out what to do with this vacuum block because we still needed to mount a spot for the whole fuel control system with this vacuum block. You know, the setup used to sit up over here and, you know, it worked out just fine, but with the oil catch can coming in, you know, that obviously changed the dimensions of everything. So I actually ended up moving it over here using an existing hole that holds up the windshield washer tank. We're gonna have to extend the electrical lines a little bit, maybe like four to six inches. And then the actual vacuum line that we have was actually the perfect length. So if you guys can see, we've got it plugged in over there on the side of the supercharger. It's ran through the car up over here and it's plumbed straight into the vibrant vacuum block setup. So there's just hours and hours of work here that you guys really didn't need to see. Now I do have one more project and that is to actually connect the catch can, you know, these AN fittings and the hose lines and all that to the valve covers themselves. But I'm actually waiting for those parts so that will be a separate video. Now if you guys want to catch that video, you're going to have to hit that subscribe button and be on the lookout for that video in the future. And if you want to know when I upload new content, make sure you turn on your bell notifications. That way you guys get a pop up when all my videos get published. And the last thing is if you guys want to help support the channel, especially help with these builds and these race parts and all that, make sure you check out all the links down below and make sure you check out our website, bonecrusherss.com. That's where all our merchandise is and all those purchases and sales go right back into the projects. Thanks guys. Have a great one.